Hey everyone, I'm Ashes. And I'm Will. And, and this, this is, is Ashes, Ashes and, and Will Do Disney. Disney. Each week, one of us will tell the other the history, facts, and stories behind the rides and attractions of Disney that have made special memories for generations. Keep in mind that Ashes and Will Do Disney is not affiliated with or employed by the Walt Disney Company, and our views and opinions do not reflect theirs. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and put on your ears, because it's time for Ashes and Will Do Disney. Hello everybody, I am back again this week for another mini episode. Hope you're all doing well and enjoyed your weekend. Not a whole lot going on in the Disney realm right now. Starting to advertise lots for the Not So Scary Halloween Party that's coming back this year at the parks. Last year it was called the Boo Bash, which was kind of a watered down version of the Not So Scary Halloween Party. We have tickets to the Not-So-Scary Halloween Party this year. I'm excited for it. Ashes has gone to it. And for those who don't know, it is an after-hours Halloween celebration that basically it's a special ticketed event. You get to go to the park around 4 p.m. and then stay till around midnight. Usually really easy just to walk on rides, so totally worth the cost. Lots of fun. Get to go do trick-or-treating things. That's park news. As far as streaming and movie news, Lightyear will be hitting the Disney Plus streaming service. That is the movie that is about the quote-unquote real Buzz Lightyear that Andy watched that got him into all the Buzz Lightyear toys in the Toy Story movies. That goes on August 3rd, which by the time this airs will be tomorrow. But with that, I was reading an issue of WDW Magazine at work yesterday during some of my downtime and came across this week's topic, and I hope you enjoy it. In Pinocchio, mischievous boys who are disobedient and play hooky are enticed to an amusement park by a character called the Coachman. A baker cries out, right here boys, right here, get your cake, pie, dill pickles, and ice cream, eat all you can, be a glutton. It's all free, boys. It's all free. Hurry, 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 hurry. Like many things, if it seems too good to be true, it is. The deceptively named Pleasure Island is actually cursed, and once the boys have spent enough time overindulging in bad behavior, they begin to turn into donkeys. Now, what if I told you that Pleasure Island was a real place? Granted, there was no curse, and no one turns into donkeys, but its history is unusual to say the least. I'll leave it to your discretion as to what is true and what is fantasy. While one may think that the name of the destination is to emphasize the emotions you would feel, one would be incorrect. The pleasure in the real Pleasure Island comes from a person, Meriwether Adam Pleasure, the son of a millionaire out to make a name for himself. While Meriwether would become a millionaire in his own right in the steel industry, his real passion was travel and fireworks. According to the story, Meriwether sold off his steel empire, purchased a riverboat, and moved to Florida in the Lake Buena Vista area. Supposedly, he came across a special totem known as the Funmeister. Pleasure would soon build factories for yachts and canvas sails as well as the Adventurers Club. The Adventurers Club would be a home to curious artifacts and oddities. In addition to his yacht factory and the Adventurers Club, Pleasure would also have a fireworks factory that would actually produce the world's largest firecracker. When the firecracker was set off to signal the end of World War I, it resulted in the area breaking off from Florida and becoming an island. Pleasure Island, that is. Soon, Pleasure Island would be the spot for a who's who of wealthy guests, adventurers, and celebrities. Each night, the celebrations strive to be on the same level of New Year's Eve. In 1941, however, the fun would come to an end for a time. Pleasure and his daughter Miriam disappeared in the Antarctic while exploring a ship. The Adventurers Club was closed with the island being left to Pleasure's sons, Stuart and Henry. Under their care, all of the businesses and buildings closed their doors one by one. After Hurricane Connie hit the island in 1955, 
Stuart and Henry disappeared, much like their father and sister, and the island sat dormant for years. However, in 1985, Disney archaeologists discovered the island and started to unbury it from plant overgrowth to see what treasures lay beneath. The discovery of the island in the Adventurers Club gave then-CEO Michael Eisner an idea. Eisner wanted to expand the destination appeal of Disney beyond rides and attractions. He also wanted to make it a shopping and entertainment spot for tourists. On May 1, 1989, Pleasure Island opened in what is now Disney Springs. The Disney archaeologists repurposed many of the abandoned buildings into nightclubs and restaurants. The history of the island was put together through various entries of Pleasure's journals. One mantra they wanted to honor from the journal was, Fun for all and all for fun. The main attraction of the island was the Adventurers Club, having been restored to its full majesty. The club housed all of Pleasure's books and artifacts and served as a spot to mingle and interact with unique individuals. There is even a secret greeting for the Adventurers Club, Kungaloosh. Even to this day, saying the greeting lets people know that you were a part of the action at the Adventurers Club. Another popular staple of Pleasure Island was the Comedy Warehouse. Although the stylings of the Comedy Warehouse would later be known for its improv style, the show originally followed a script and was known as Forbidden Disney. The Forbidden Disney show would openly make fun of the Disney vacation experience, and this was all done with the approval of Michael Eisner. This is much different from today, where it is highly frowned upon for any Disney cast member to say anything disparaging about the company, even in jest. In addition to the show, the Comedy Warehouse was full of Disney memorabilia, such as props and signs from closed attractions and parades. Of course, no nightlife hotspot would be complete without music and dancing. There were four clubs and each had their own style and theme. The most bizarre would be a club called Mannequins. Mannequins was a cross between techno and Broadway, and, oddly enough, had a wide range of mannequin decor. Another unique staple of the island was the XZFR Rock and Roller Dome. It was here that Pleasure built the X-Thing spacecraft utilized to send broadcasts meant for aliens. Some wonder if his disappearance is linked to these broadcasts. The signaling device still worked when Disney discovered the island in 1985. When the beacon was turned back on, it summoned an otherworldly band known as the Time Pilots. They performed nightly at the Roller Dome. Some even believe that turning on the welcome beacon may have brought pleasure back himself. Guests reported seeing an ethereal man dressed in a yachting cap, often sitting by himself in a booth as he murmured, Fun for all and all for fun. In the 19 years Pleasure Island was open at Walt Disney World, many changes plowed through, mainly rebrands of the nightclubs. As time went on, Some of the quirkiness of Pleasure Island had started to fade, and on September 27, 2008, the island put on its last fireworks display. Fourteen years later, there are still some traces of the island, but it mainly lives on in memory. There are still adventurers out there hoping that one day, someone will take the same risk and vision that Michael Eisner did for the unique nightlife experience and unearth Pleasure Island once again. That's it for this week's episode of Ashes and Will Do Disney. Don't forget we need your mouse tails. If you have a funny, weird, exciting, or just a favorite Disney memory, send it to ashesandwilldodisney at gmail.com so we can read them on the show. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Ashes and Will Do Disney. This is a public group to follow. We're also on YouTube at Ashes and Will Do Disney. Please subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much for listening and have a magical day.